Hey, happy Tuesday, everybody. Mark again here at Weatherman Plus. Now I got a big update for you on this next cold blast coming and bringing a snowstorm with it, high winds, and some flooding. Now we're on a big warm-up actually all week long, so you're going to feel some really nice temperatures coming through, even for your highs and your lows. But once we go through this dip, it is really going to get cold. And what you must know as far as the snow and the temperatures is in this video. So make sure you do subscribe. I am all year long. All I ask, if you know somebody in these impacts, please share this information. Hit the like button. It does go a long way. Thank you so much for your support. Make sure you click the bell. That way you get to updates. Now let's get into the information. But you must click the bell to get to updates. I've been talking about this transition for 12 to 13 days now. And I've been giving updates daily so we know what all the changes are. And that's the best way you can go about this. Now you can see what your vorticity as this system comes from the southwest, bringing more flood into California, Arizona. It's going to go towards the upper Midwest. And this is going to bring a little bit of snowfall, a little bit of rain. It's not going to be no big super storm that's going to be coming through which is going to bring a little bit of snowfall definitely in higher elevations but it's going to be too warm and it's going to bring a lot of rain with that then after that we're going to go to that deep transition where you get a deep trough i'll show you the latest data all the way from the 11th through the 13th potentially bringing snow with this as this comes all the way towards mid-atlantic and the northeast I will show you the latest information. It's still showing the same track, but you must know about the temperatures. The temperatures, like I said in yesterday's video, is going to change the story on this snowstorm. And I have some big updates for you. So first, you got this first system coming up all week long, all the way to Thursday and Friday. Bring in rainfall, bring in some storms, nothing really severe. A little bit of lightning strikes, a little bit of thunderstorms passing through, and a light amount of snow. But you're going to be in this great warm-up the whole time all week. It's still going to come down at night for the northeast, still bringing some wind chills. But it's going to warm right back up every single day. So just for tomorrow, tomorrow night, cool air comes back down, warm right back up for Thursday again. Really nice temperatures. It really is going to be spring-like. Go down for Thursday night and come right back up for Friday. And as we go through the weekend, then we're going to go through this transition. Now, I'd like to note, so far, National Weather Service does not have any severe weather outlooks for the next eight days. But showing on SIPs, there is a chance for severe weather, a chance to grow on the 9th as this transitions towards the upper Midwest. And it is going to be for chances for hail and chances for wind. It's not showing any chances for any kind of tornadoes to be popping up with that. But there could be a little bit of wind and a little bit of hail that comes with that system going to the upper Midwest. But then we're going to go on that transition. So if you wasn't here for yesterday's video, we have cold air coming all the way down towards the 15th. And it's going to last towards the end of February. There's going to be another dip where it comes down and comes all the way down towards the 20th. So it's been trending that it won't be really on the first dip of this cold air coming down. As we get that trough, you can see on your EPO, we're going to get a trough coming down. So that cold air is not going to be on the beginning of that trough. But as that trough continues, as it goes towards the 20th, as we get a deep trough on the southwest by the four corners, that that cold air will remain there, maybe still going deeper, because you can see the previous run showing chances of it. And your average right here, this green, look how it goes even deeper now. Chances for this cold air to come further and further into the country. Maybe chances for some Arctic air, just a little bit, to come down through Canada and touch the northern side of the U.S. Now let's talk snowfall, because in yesterday's video I showed you how it's going to be fighting these temperatures. And it could be a lot of snow coming down because the cold air is aloft. However, it is going to melt or come down as rain as it comes down on the ground. Because it's just too warm, so it really needs to come overnight into the early morning hours to see any kind of snow. So you can see right here from your latest Euro model run, it does bring a lot of heavy snow, all the way for the higher elevations of Washington, Oregon, California, Nevada, Utah, Arizona, even Colorado, Idaho, Western Wyoming gets in on it, a little bit lighter for New Mexico, for Montana. Brings a little bit to the upper Midwest as we get that first snow system. So we get that system coming Thursday and Friday, not much. When we get that dip, it's going to be fighting warm temperatures the whole time, coming during the day, and then maybe going out through the mid-Atlantic and a little bit of the northeast overnight. You can see this on GFS as well. Brings a lot of snow. All this pink is all 10 inches plus. The blue is 2 feet. But look how it brings snowfall towards the south central, 
towards the northeast and look at the next run is going a little bit further to the north but you can see how it's fighting this temperature line while it's pulling up all this precipitation now when you want to try and go by what's trending the canadian is showing that this really is going to be a warm battle and that's pretty much what we've been seeing in the temperatures that is going to overall going to turn out like this for the eastern side of the u.s it's going to stay cold for the western side you're going to hold on to your snow the eastern side of the U.S., you're going to be fighting these temperatures, and you might see it for a while, but it is going to disappear eventually. So let's look at the models and see what is going on. And then when you look with GFS, it actually brings it all the way until Tuesday on the 13th. Overnight, early morning hours, starts bringing in the freezing temperatures from that system just revolving counterclockwise right here, pulling down the cold air, bringing in some snowfall with that, as it transitions overnight, then it starts meeting up with the freezing temperatures overnight in the early morning hours for the Northeast. And you can see this transition here. It brings it up. It's fighting with the temperatures right here, pulling it down just a little bit counterclockwise as it moves through and it just meets the nighttime temperatures. Then it really hits that frozen mark for the Northeast and continues to bring the snowfall, even a strong system for the Northeast, but it's been trending that it might be too warm right along the coast. Now, when you take the latest update with the ensemble, the control member of the Euro, matter of fact, look at the latest update with the control member of the Euro on these ensembles, showing a dramatic change. It was very heavy snowfall for the longest time, now it's showing it's going to be fighting those temperatures and it's going to end up being a three to five inch battle. Showing that first transition all the way from now towards the 15th of February. It will come in with good snowfall towards the beginning of this trough. But look how it fights the temperatures and it lightens up severely. Then on that second dip as we go from the 10th through the 20th. You see how it has a better chance of holding some kind of snow. But both of them is agreeing it might just be an inch for the northeast when the latest model run's been showing a big, strong snowstorm. All right, so now I'm going to walk you through this. So as we start on Sunday morning on the 11th, it's going to start getting that deep trough, bringing that 540 line to freezing temperatures for New Mexico, for the Panhandle of Texas. Everyone else is still going to be warm. And you can see your temperatures for Sunday morning. It's going to be a nice warm all the way across the south and southeast, going towards the northeast. It's going to be cold for the Rocky Mountains, very cold in higher elevations, negative temperatures. And for the central, the upper Midwest, the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes, and your wind chill is still going to be the worst part of this transition. Bringing negative 20 degree wind chills, maybe even stronger towards the higher elevations in the Rocky Mountains. Bringing single digits, even teen temperature feels like temperatures to a lot of people. But at the same time, look at this, what is fighting for the daily highs. So even though it's bringing in some cooler temperatures, some freezing temperatures, for your highs, it warms right back up. So as you're going through Sunday afternoon, you have some storms that start brewing across the south and the southeast. Remember, days ago, I told you, could be some severe weather that comes out of this. But you can also see maybe a little bit of mix, a little bit of snow, but mostly it's going to be a rain transition for Texas. Not no big snowstorm like people have been showing you. I don't believe that. But at the same time, SIP sees that there is a chance maybe for one little bit of severe weather for southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, as it's getting these low pressures building up right on the west of it and going to the east. However, even SIPS is showing that it won't be chances for tornadoes. It'll be a smaller chance for a chance for hail than what they're seeing on the 9th and a chance for some winds to build up. And the whole time it's going to pull up all this precipital water. It's going to come in from the Gulf of Mexico and get pulled up across the south and the south east right there getting your storm on the 10th building up getting pushed down by that cold blast and going across the southeast bringing a lot of good rainfall especially around the 11th a lot of heavy rainfall per hour as that pushes off and that is bringing heavy rainfall there is an outlook for that we can also see where your lower level winds your winds are lofty you get some strong winds on monday and tuesday as that system starts building up, then as it goes off to the Carolinas, look at the strong winds right offshore, even getting some on the coast as you go through the 13th, 
bringing potentially some high winds. So far, still showing you got the 40 and 50 miles per hour wind gusts for this storm system that's going all the way up through Thursday, maybe even a little bit of Friday on that first system. But you can see right here for that next system that is bringing the 50 and the 60 miles per hour wind gusts. So you got the first system that's going offshore. As soon as the low pressure gets away from the high pressure, the winds will calm down. But you got the second system that's going to come in and bring the 40, the 50, 60, 70, even showing 80 and 90 miles per hour wind gusts right offshore that could also bring some big waves but a lot of dangerous conditions right along the coast be aware of that and there is a risk for high winds is a slight risk but it's from the 13th through the 17th as we go through that transition now monday morning that trough moves over starts bringing the cold air down towards the south as well but you can see it's going up on that higher ridge bringing the storms, you've seen the dew points, you've seen the winds aloft, it starts bringing a little bit of snowfall. So as you go into Monday, you can see your temperatures are still very warm. So you might get some snowfall coming at the lower levels at the 850 millibars, but on the ground, it will either melt on contact or come down just as rain. You can see all the freezing temperatures that is coming down though, as you go through Monday on the 12th, all the way to the Northeast, and with the wind chills, this is going to be one of the strongest two days. Bring a lot of very cold wind chills all the way towards the south central into northern Mexico, going all the way across Tennessee, Kentucky Valley, Ohio Valley, Great Lakes, and the northeast. So as you go for your highs for Monday, look how it just warms right back up. So as you get in this potential snowstorm, it's going to melt whatever falls. So as you go through Monday afternoon, it starts strengthening up as it goes across the mid-Atlantic. Bring in some snowfall probably to the higher elevations. That'd be the only ones that would be accumulating anything as this goes off to the east. Then as you go late night Monday from 10 o'clock towards midnight, strengthen up even more right along the coast, still bring a lot of storms, still bring in the chance for some snowfall to come down because it's coming overnight now. And as you go into early in the morning, all the way to around 3, 4 a.m., potential strong storm right on your benchmark right there bringing a lot of snowfall and a lot of mix and potential some winds. Then as you go towards seven, eight o'clock in the morning, it's gonna push offshore, but it's cyclogenesis. It's still a strengthening low pressure as it goes offshore. So when you go into Tuesday morning as it's going offshore, you can see there's a lot of freezing temperatures around, but there's also a lot of temperatures that's right at 33, right at 34, where you still will see it, but it won't stick, maybe on the grass. But still, the worst part is going to be the wind chills. So here you are for Tuesday morning now, coming all the way down again, going towards northern Florida now, feeling like you're in the 30s, all the way towards the northeast. But still, the big problem is your highs. is going to warm right back up again, and everything that does fall is going to melt. Maybe the higher elevations of western North Carolina, Virginia and Eastern West Virginia will keep the snow. At the same time, it is gonna start adding up to whoever's not getting snowfall to a lot of good rainfall. Showing it will be one to two inches coming out of that. Now the latest update pushes it a little bit further to the west. You can only go for the next six days, which is all you should push it anyway. But you see how it's going a little bit further to the west now. So there is a risk for heavy precipitation from the 13th through the 19th. And you can see it from the 16th through the 19th on that second system, bringing more flooding towards the west and mainly southern California again, going into Arizona. Then as it transitions across the southeast, this is going to be our second system. It's bringing a slight risk for heavy rainfall across Texas, Louisiana, southern Arkansas, across the deep south and the southeast. Plus, you have Alaska as well from the 13th through the 16th. And when we try and follow, see what precipitation adds up all the way to the 19th. It's so far away. You see it's not adding to a lot, but look where it's adding up. That's because our jet stream is going to be so deep. It's going to be bringing these storms into Mexico, into the Gulf of Mexico, all the way towards the Yucatan. It's going to feel this jet stream all the way towards Cuba. Now, when we check with GFS, you can see the first additional <laughs> rainfall that's coming. Then when you go from the 15th through the 19th, boom, it brings that heaviness towards southern Texas, the coast over here by Houston, across uh, southern Louisiana, southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, 
across northern Florida, southern Georgia, South Carolina, around, along the coast, and North Carolina. A big heavy strip coming that way, and this will change around. I will keep you updated. Now, when you look at ensembles, you can see all this snow coming in. So as you look towards the northwest, all the way for the next five days, bring in a lot of snowfall. And you can see for that next transition, it is bringing more snowfall. So winter is far from over. You can see this from all 50 members. Southwest, I didn't forget you neither. You're just going to start adding up to some snowfall also for the next five days. Then it's going to add up even more as this comes down with more cold air, more precipitation, just getting really heavy on some of these snowfall rates. Now, Texas and the South Central, you can see you're not getting a lot of that snow, just like I told you, all the way for the next 10 days. Not any of them really showing anything. You got a couple, so we might get something very small, but it's been trending that you're not going to get anything. Matter of fact, it's been showing that second storm that comes all the way towards the 20th is where the better chance for any southern snow to happen. And you can see for the Corn Belt, as it goes up, not really much for the next five days on that first system, but then here it goes, that transition, bringing that potential storm all the way to 10 days. Some of them showing a heavy storm, but the majority of them is showing just going to be too warm to get that big snowstorm. Maybe later as we get that transition, getting more temperatures coming through. And you can see this on all members. They're all agreeing the next 10 days, not really much. There's a few that show a good snowstorm, but there's more that's showing it won't be. And the Northeast, you can see in the next five days, nothing. As you go all the way to 10 days, that's when it starts bringing in your potential chance for your snowstorm. You can see this on all of your members, bringing a potential chance for a good, heavy snowstorm. And then as you go into the next transition, maybe getting more out of that as well. Now for the Southeast, you can see it really don't go too far all the way for 10 days. It is going to be maybe from the 15th to the 20th as it goes deeper on that cold air. You can see this with all the ensembles. Not showing there's a great chance at all, but if you have any chance, it will be from the 15th through the 20th. And my final piece of information for y'all for today for what your possibilities are is from the meteorologist at Weather Prediction Center. You can see this is put out by Putnam. And as you go through Thursday, you're going to get a system going through the upper Midwest, bring in rainfall in the dark green, a chance of that in the lighter color. Same thing with the snowfall, the mix in the purple. As you go through Friday morning, it goes up towards Canada. We get that next one coming through. Here it is Saturday going towards the south central bring in some storms and then it goes through Sunday. So far showing it's just storms and rain and Monday, just storms and rain. Not even showing that yet offshore, showing it will go up on a higher ridge over towards the Great Lakes and on Tuesday, then move out towards the edge of New England, bringing a chance for rain and up here for the higher elevations to northern side of the New England, a chance for snow. That's the latest update. I will keep you updated. Now, before you go today, Romans 13, 10 through 14. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is a fulfilling of the law. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Amen. Have a great day, everybody. And remember, all glory always goes to God, our Father in heaven, Yahweh. And hope he always keeps you safe, you and your family, and forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Have a great day, everybody.